throw pillows is, have always been this area where I've had throw pillows, I haven't liked them, they annoy my husband, <laughs> they get they get on the floor and the kids walk all over them, but somehow I still just can't bring myself to quite get rid of them. Hey, it's Kathleen from oldworldfarmhouse.com. I've been doing a series here in my house where I'm trying to make the most of my living room just with what I already have, not buying anything, and following the best practices and rules of thumb that I can find from decorators, especially my favorite blogger, Laurel Byrne, but I've also enlisted some other advice as well. I've got, I've, this is my fourth video I think now in this series, and today it's all about throw pillows. So that's my story with throw pillows and I wanted to get better at it in this room because I felt like they had something to add to my living room. I love throw pillows because I like to sit and kind of hug one when I'm conversing with people. And now that I'm getting older, sometimes I really like to have one at my lower back, which my, I've noticed my parents do as well. So I think it's a comfort thing. Throw pillows are a great way to add color in your room, to add texture because you can get soft ones or embroidered ones. They can add personality. They can tie your whole room together, kind of like your rug. There's all these questions like, what size should you pick? What do you need to get down fill or can you use synthetic? There's a big difference in price. And then why are some so stiff and others are so crushable and like wad up into practically nothing? Most of the time with throw pillows, there's the cover and then there's the insert if you're lucky. And that's really the best thing to do. So the best thing is to have a cover with a zipper. Where's the zipper on here? So that you can take the cover off and wash it. I actually just washed all of my covers in preparation for this video, all the ones that I could. Now this is a pillow, it's actually from Walmart, it's in the stores right now. My husband gave it to me for my birthday and I really love this cover. It's got a great texture front and back, it's totally washable and it's got the zipper at the bottom. And then here is the insert and it's a down alternative, so that's great. This being down, maybe it's a mix, down fill or down alternative, that means that you can shape it and get that nice pillow chop, which I'll talk about pillow karate in a little bit, but that's great and that's something that with most synthetics you can't do. Now here's a pillow, I, ha I do have a few pillows. This is not removable. And actually my son cut off the tag and he cut too close and he actually got, so I need to stitch this up, but you can see this pillow, it just has this loose fiber fill in it. And if you're gonna wash it, you're gonna have to wash the whole pillow. And in my experience, you are gonna wanna wash it, but unfortunately when you wash it, that fill on the inside, it might do strange things like bunch up and lump up. So this is really the best idea is to make sure that your pillow cover is separate from your insert. And that being said, you know, these came together, but you can buy pillow covers and pillow inserts separately. Now, if you're gonna do that, there's actually some rules of thumb or rules to get it stuffed right. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what they are, but I'm not going to claim that my pillows are following these rules of thumb and I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. General rule is, this is an 18 by 18 cover, okay? So Laurel Burns says, if you've got a pillow cover 18 inch or longer, the insert should be two inches bigger on each side. So that would mean you'd want a 20 by 20 insert to fit inside of here. And that's because when you stuff it in, and now I think this one is actually an 18 by 18, I don't think it's a 20 by 20, but when you stuff it in, your corners will be nice and crisp and your pillow will be nice and full looking. And that makes it look very luxurious and high end and shapely and just everything that you want your pillow to look like. Now, mine is not quite in that category, and you can see it's not filling quite out to the corners, not quite, so it could probably benefit from having a 20 by 20 insert in here. That's what I think. 
So get the bigger size insert there. And then if it's a, a rectangular pillow, a lumbar or rectangular pillow, this I bought at Ikea years ago and it's not following the rule either. But the rule for lumbars is any kind of lumbar, your insert should be one inch bigger on all sides than your cover for the same reason because then you get these corners nice and filled out and plumpy but obviously as i discovered in my research there's a lot of pillows out there that are not following this advice so beware be aware of that when you're looking for pillows at wherever you're looking for pillows you can also buy or make cover covers separately and then buy down inserts or down uh, down replacement inserts very easily on Amazon. I bought some on Amazon a few years ago, very reasonably priced. And then I, um, what did I do with those? Oh yeah, I bought them for these covers. So I bought some smaller ones, but I did make sure to carefully get the right size that she recommends. I want a smaller pillow like this, less than 18 inches. It's just, it only has to be one inch bigger. The insert only has to be one inch bigger than the cover. And I remember I did follow that rule when I got these and you can see that they're much tighter. They're much tighter filled and they do fill out the corners. This one, my cover is actually getting ripped. So I'm only showing that side, but you can see on this one how that works. So it just gives it a much fuller look. Everything I looked at, I looked, like I looked at Studio McGee and I looked at Laurel Byrne and I looked at some decorating stores online. They have these pillow recommendations. Nobody ever recommended anything really other than a square or a rectangle. I didn't see anything about using bolster pillows in the living room or even round pillows. I personally don't have any of those. I think that you maybe could kind of add some in the front if you really wanted to, like small decorative pillows. But it seemed the, the main thing that we're gonna be focusing on in this video is your big square pillows on chairs and benches and sofas. What sizes should they be? And how should you arrange them or place them on your sofa? And I've always had a lot of problems with this. I, it never looks right when I do it. So I, I read up a lot. I read up a Laurel's blog and I read a Studio McGee article about it and another website called Wilmot's Decorating Center. They had a really nifty infographic that showed different options. So let's give all of that a try and I will link those articles at the bottom if you wanna go check them out yourself, but I'm gonna try out their tips here. So the first thing, oh, and of course my book, Interior Design Handbook by Frida Rumstead, she's got some excellent drawing pillow diagrams in there as well as I took a look at that as well. So let's just go through all of this stuff. So everyone agrees that you start with your largest pillow at the back and then you layer smaller from there. Okay, so I'm gonna take all these pillows off my couch actually. And I'm gonna take a drink of my tea. I've got some peppermint tea today from Aldi. It's very good. And I'm just gonna see. So here's my couch without any pillows. This is another one that does not have, I cannot, there's no way to unzip this. It's just sewed all the way around. And the end result is that it never gets washed. And I think I'm going to actually take the insert out of there and get a different cover because I'm really frustrated with that, not being able to wash my pillows. It's fine. It might be appealing in a certain minimal, minimalist way, really. And honestly, my husband would probably prefer it this way. But I think that throw pillows could do, do a little more for it. The first step that everyone agrees on is to put your largest pillow at the back and then layer on from there. And I ran into trouble right away because everything I looked at, they all recommend starting with your largest pillow being either a 22 or 20 inch size or sometimes even a 24. And all the pillows I own, the largest size that I own is 18 by 18, which seemed plenty big to me before. But for the purposes of this video, I ran out to Walmart and just grabbed two 
pillows that are 22 by 22. And I'm not gonna keep these because they don't have removable covers, even though they're really soft and I love how they feel. They don't have removable covers and I can't easily do my pillow karate chops on them, so they're not, but for the purposes of demonstration, I really wanted to see. These are 22 by 22 pillows and I didn't get any 20 by 20s, but I'm gonna put these in the corner. So these are my, let's say these are my biggest size, 20, 22 by 22. And then the next thing to do, the general rule of thumb is to take your pillows down in size in two inch increments. So ideally you'd have your 22 by 22 and then you have your 20 by 20 in front of that. Now I've got 18 by 18, so it's going down by four. So it might not look as good as it would if it was you know, up a little higher. But let's just see. So this would be a sort of traditional classic. Let me get this out of the way. You can see there. This would be like a traditional classic pillow combination for a couch. So this could be like a basic, a basic combination for a couch. 22 by 22 in the corners and then 20 by 20, ideally, although in my case, 18 by 18 in front of that. Laurel Burns' favorite combination for a couch is two, one, and two with about a 25 inch lumbar pillow in the middle and then a 22, 20, 22, 20 on either side. Sometimes it seems like it's very popular and pleasing Designers tend to, they like to work in odd groups. So five pillows kind of gives more visual interest than symmetrical two. So along those lines, another thing that you could do with your pillows is you could have a big 22, 24 in the back, and then you could layer a lumbar in front. And that, I actually like the way that looks on this couch quite a bit with that 25 inch lumbar there. I'm gonna try it on the other side. I have a smaller lumbar pillow, let me go grab it. I actually really like the way this looks with the, the big 22 inch in the back and then this 25 in the front. I like this one too, but I think the size differential is a little, it, it's a little too big of a difference between this one and this one, I think. But this one I think looks. Another idea that I got from Wilmot's Decorating Center website is you could have one large pillow on one side and then you could do a few smaller pillows on the other side and that way they balance out sort of visually but there's some interest because the shapes are different and the number is different. In my interior design handbook by Frida Romstead, she recommends you could make sort of triangles out of multiple pillows. So you've got like a triangle. And if you wanted to really go pillow crazy, you could even add a lumbar in the middle. What all these experts recommend for a chair is either a 22 or 24 inch single pillow or a lumbar pillow. Now on my chairs, I've got my trusty old 18 inch pillows I think looks fine but let's give the other sizes a try as well well first of all you sit here and you've got your 18 inch and I think it feels pretty comfy toss that over to the side here's the 22 inch and you can see how that fills up the whole back of the chair and it actually makes it look I think very very warm and inviting I, I can understand why that's the recommended shape and then when you lean back, it's like an extra, it feels good actually. It's a lumbar. That's a 25 inch lumbar. And of course the color doesn't work at all, but just for the sake of giving it a try. I think 25, I don't really care for how that looks. Let's try the 12 inch.
Hmm. Well, those lumbars anyway aren't doing much for me. Let me show you my other chair. This, in fact, is only a 16 by 16 pillow. And I actually, I love how this pillow looks on this chair, but let's try the recommended size. Well, here's 18 by 18, which is still not as big as their, the experts' recommendations, 18 by 18. Here's the expert recommendations. Here's a 22 inch. Okay. On this chair, I mean, I, these are this color is not doing this chair any favors and vice versa. But I see why they say uh, to use this size because it just feels really full and cozy. On the other hand, that doesn't look bad, but I do see why. It's kind of like when I've done my other videos where I'm like, okay, I see why my room doesn't have that Oh, like when you see something and you're like, oh, that's just perfect. I think it really comes down to all these little details. The devil's in the details, or maybe the angels are in the details, or both. So I will keep that in mind as I shop for pillows. Just real quick, let's try out the lumbar size. Uh, not doing too much for me, the lumbar on the armchair. I suppose depending on what kind of chair you had, it might work better, but I don't think it looks very nice on this kind. Then after you look at all the shape recommendations, size recommendations, you're left with the fun part, which is color and pattern and texture. So Laurel Byrne says for a couch like this, this is a quite long couch, but let's say a three-seater or a four-seater couch like this. She likes three patterns on five pillows, which I have here, I've got, I've got this, I've got two pillows like so. I guess I, you know, these are different colorways, but they're the same pattern, these two. And then I've got this check. So that's three, uh, three, actually that's three patterns on six pillows. And then if I put my lumbar behind me, that which is solid, that would be four. But anyway, this, this is an example of three patterns on five, okay, six pillows. The rules of thumb I came across for patterns as far as mixing them, I really think it's up a lot up to the, just what you think looks good, but general rules of thumb would be like a bigger pattern, a bigger scale pattern, which I think this is rather a large scale, and then combine it with a smaller scale, which uh, I think this is. Uh, honestly, this was a complete total not planned at all these pillows mi mixing and matching together and i hope i'm not forcing it let me know in the comments if you think i am but i do actually think that they go together i didn't at first but working through all this kind of came around to it so but here's a you know smaller scale larger scale i think that's a great even this side is also smaller but this is obviously the back of the pillow i rather like it though i'm just going to turn it around here so we can see there's your big scale pattern. There's your, oh, let me scooch it back. I'm like moving my, there we go. Bigger and smaller. And then let's put this one, which is, this is kind of like a medium size. It's not a small, it's not a large. The other thing that you could do would be mix like round with straight, like stripes and then dots or, flowers and stripes or plaids and dots all those kind of juxtapositions i think work really well and then there's the fun thing of texture which i hadn't really thought about at all until i was researching this video but obviously your polos have texture this is just cotton and cotton but this has a fun embroidered texture on the front that's 3d i don't know if you can see it but these little these are little uh, embroideries that are raised and bumpy and then all of these that I have are kind of silky and shiny I am not gonna keep these because I really need something with a removable cover but it's so soft I don't know what this is chenille or something but it's so soothing I would love to be sitting and visiting somewhere and have a pillow like this at my back or in front of me like this while I was talking I think it'd be great this is a pillow I picked up years ago at a thrift store and it's got like a little crochet cover. So there's all kinds of fun ways you can play with texture, pattern, and just add interest to your room. And then as far as color goes, pillows could be 
either colors that are in your, the givens of your room, like my room, my givens are red, cool red and warm red, and some beige and white. And so my pillows, I think they work really well with that. Like these ones do, they've got red and beige. And, but then they've got some little extras, like there's some gold in here. And I don't really have any other thing in here quite this color of yellow. But I, I just kind of think it doesn't matter in a pillow. And I think that's kind of borne out. There's this rule in decorating that I saw several places mentioned called the 60-30-10 rule. And let me look it up. I wrote it down because I can't remember anything anymore. This was from an interior design handbook. Frida Rumstead was talking about it. So 60% of your room should be like one dominant color. 30% should be another secondary color. And then 10% be an accent color. Mostly speaking, I'm kind of like, okay, my dominant color is red, and then I've got like beige and white, and then I've got 10% that could maybe be gold or orange, because I've got my orange, my chair with embroidered oranges on it, and I've got a little bit of gold in these pillows, and actually a little bit of mustard yellow in my folding screen back there that's kind of picked up by this cushion. This one is a little anomalous <laughs> because it's blue. So maybe it's the odd one out, but I do think it looks fine with the sage. So it, and it's what I have right now. So here it stays, just like all my other 18 inch pillows. Now this video has opened my eyes to the fact that yes, I do think that the 22 inch size works really well on chairs and on my couch. And on, or just, I should say any couch. So I, I think that is definitely a rule of thumb that I will keep in mind, which brings me to searching for pillows. Now this is a low buy uh, series where we're just, I'm just working with what I have already and I'm encouraging you to do the same, but that doesn't mean that a girl can't dream, right? Now, I find it pretty easy to find, acquire throw pillows Honestly, these two were gifts and from Walmart, they're, they're very new, they're still being sold. But everything else in here I picked up secondhand, in some cases really inexpensively. Like I bought these a couple years back on the clearance at a consignment store and they were a dollar a piece because they were just marked down and marked down and marked down. And I did originally buy them only for the inserts because they have a really nice down insert, but I've come around to even liking uh, the covers on them. But that's something you can do always when you're out thrifting is keep an eye out for throw pillows and look for the kind that have the nice inserts that you can squish. It could be down, it could be 50 synthetic, 50 knot, it could be a total synthetic that actually squishes like down, down alternative. Um, but if you keep an eye out for that kind of thing, it's often worth it to buy just for the insert because you can always unzip and take off the cover, make a new cover or even buy a new cover. But the insert is, is they're not that expensive, but you know, it does add up. I will link in my description to the ones that I bought on Amazon or some, or similar, it was a few years back now, but if you just want to get inserts, which is a totally great thing to do, but also just keep in mind when you're out thrifting, you might find some real gems for, and save yourself a bunch of money. The last thing I wanted to talk about, which is pillow karate and what's inside of your pillows. I, I alluded to it a second ago. If you have a pillow that like this one, not to bag on my Walmart pillow because it is really nice. What is inside? It's, it's filled with 100% polyester. So it is not a down alternative at all, okay? And you can see, no matter what I do to it, it retains its shape. It actually seems to be built a little bit so that you can dent it on the top, which is cool. I think they might've built that into the design, but then if you turn it this way, you've got this stupid thing hanging out, so turn it the other way. I guess you could cut that off, okay. But you're not gonna be able to really shape these kind of pillows that have this totally synthetic Inside, let me show you another example. Here are two examples of a pillow that you really cannot shape. They both have a synthetic interior and no matter what you do to it, it doesn't really change its shape that much. 
Now it's time for some pillow karate. I think there's basically three things you can do with your pillows. Once you've made sure that you have a down fill insert or a down alternative. Down alternative will also respond in this fun way. So the very first thing you can do to make your give your pillows a little bit of shape on your couch is the karate chop just in the middle, bam. And then you have, you've probably seen this on lots of decorator websites or blogs, but you got the pillow and then you have this kind of cool, like it gives it these little ears at the top. Very stylish and fashionable. Put it in the corner like that. The second thing you can do is you can do that chop on the top and then you can kind of chop the sides as well. So you've got three indentations, one, two, three, and that gives it a, that's another shape that you could try. To do this a lot on lumbar pillows, it, it's just to kind of, you know, kind of indent the middle a little bit, but you could also do that one of your bigger pillows as well. So there you have it, three ways to give your pillows some shape with some fun karate. If you love this kind of content and talking about decor rules of thumb and European country styles and thrifting and consignment shopping, please consider subscribing to my channel. I love these topics, they're my passion. I love talking clothes and I love talking interior decor. So this is Kathleen from Moldboro Farmhouse and thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next video. Let me know down below what you think of my pillows and if you've got any advice or insights that I didn't cover here. Bye-bye.